I keep calling it, man. Told you guys, Yuta and Yuji are gonna turn up Asukuno real quick while they have him like this. Notice how I didn't title this video with Yuta is about to cook Sukuna again or some shit like that. Because if you actually listen to what I say in these videos, I don't actually believe that these guys are gonna win this easily. After this chapter, I expect the tides to turn in Sukuna's favor at the end of next chapter. Sure, Yuji and Yuta might cook a little bit more, but I can promise you that the end of next chapter is either Sukuna using Black Box, his domain expansion, or the world cutting this mantle. By the way, guys, I'm a little sick, so I apologize for my voice. All you can do is applaud Yuji and especially Yuta for their performance. Unfortunately, in some places in the community, Yuta hype equates to diminishing Hakari, and I'm probably gonna see it in this comment section. Oh my god, now we know Hakari gets bodied by Yuta. Yuta beats him in every aspect. Oh my god, Hakari's a jackpot merchant. Oh my god, this guy sucks. He's not even strong in a base Kashimo. Yuta would just beat him in a domain clash. He's not even strong. Gojo's statements don't matter. Your guys' time will come, and I'll address all you guys when the time is appropriate. But I try not to let those things impact my enjoyment of Yuta and the story. The beginning of the chapter, we see an explanation of Yuta's domain. Main. It is exactly how we assumed in the last video and confirmed that each sword is a random curse technique that Yuta has copied. In this chapter, we get revealed to other curse techniques that Yuta has copied, and man, one particularly caught me off guard. And no, it's not Cleave because all of us pretty much predicted that, but it was actually Charles' future site. So you're telling me Hakari kicked Charles' ass, then Yuta spun back later to take his curse technique? I don't know if Charles consented to that. By the way, a lot of people are saying, we don't even know how Yuta gets his curse techniques. This is so lame. What are you guys talking about? Is it that crazy to believe that Yuta went to a culling game player and took their curse technique or they probably just gave it to him? Like, I don't know what you guys are on right now. Although Future Sight does seem OP, I want to remind you guys it can be countered and it only grants you precisely one second into the future. But as the fight progresses, Yuta could probably extend that time like Charles did. But then again, he still needs to pick up the correct sword and find the right times to use it. So it might be difficult to actually effectively use Future Sight. Also, Yuta uses Cleave this chapter, and there's some controversy around this since a lot of people wanted Yuji to obtain Sukuna's abilities. Since it could have been foreshadowed by Gege, and Gojo mentions Yuji will start to learn Sukuna's abilities, while Sukuna was still in his body, by the way. And obviously, he's not in his body anymore, so. I don't kind of see why this has to happen because of that Gojo statement. And Yuji pretty much saying that he will eat anything. The people who genuinely find this a problem, you guys just need to calm down. For one, we don't know if Rika consumed the finger. Rika could have ate the hand that Sukuna dropped while fighting Higuruma. But what I think is more likely is that Yuji also has cleave as well, or Sukuna's abilities, potentially, maybe by eating the finger or something along those lines. And Yuta somehow got it off of Yuji. I feel like that's the most effective way to distribute the power for them. Might not necessarily make the most sense, but as we've seen throughout the battle, these guys prepared an insane amount for this fight against Sukuna. And Sukuna even makes a regard to this while smiling and crossing his arms. This face Sukuna is making his smirk, it gives me life, bro. This shit is way too funny. Like, look how he's crossing his arms. I'm loving Sukuna more, honestly, even though he packed my favorite character. He says, what have you guys done over the past month? And then he makes another remark to Yuta being able to, hold up. I'm having trouble saying this word. A sophisticated barrier technique allowing him to make his sure hit effect only target Sukuna and not allies like Yuji in his domain. While remembering Yuji learned RCT in one month and stated that the student's overall defense has increased. And I find it oddly strange that we get some Ryu hype from Sukuna. Even though Sukuna says he has to make direct contact with them due to their tough defense in order to do fatal damage with his slashes, like he did with Ryu, their defenses, even after this one month, still isn't as tough as Ryu's to Sukuna. I find that a bit crazy. So since Sukuna disassembled Ryu with zero difficulty at all, that's pretty much implying Sukuna can do the same thing to them. Which they admit this chapter, if Sukuna wasn't nerfed to this degree, they wouldn't be able to heal and die in an instant. So for people out there saying Yuta beats a 15 figure Sukuna, I respect the agenda, but I don't think that's a conversation right now. We get a count of all the curse techniques that Yuta is currently using or has in his bag from Sukuna. Jacob's Ladder, Space Manipulation, that one Shikigami technique, I forgot who he got it from, that person in the cutting game. He used them with Rika this chapter, Curse Speech, and Charles' Future Sight. Hold up, if you made it this far into the video and haven't hit that subscribe button, what are you doing? Do me that favor. If you guys are enjoying the video, at least leave a like. If you don't want to subscribe, that's fine. I am very grateful. But don't ignore me. I know, yes, the YouTube fan in you that clicked this video 
this video was for you. Come on, you YouTube lover, you cheeky YouTube lover, just for you. Just, just, just hit that subscribe button. What's interesting is that Sukuna even thinks about Utah potentially using Limitless, but quickly shuts that down by saying you need the six eyes to control it, so it doesn't matter whether he has it or not, which is true. But you don't actually need the six eyes to use Limitless. You need to have a very sophisticated understanding and manipulation of cursed energy, which Gojo didn't need in order to use Limitless because the six eyes is like a cheat code. This implies using Limitless isn't impossible, but obviously if Yuta used it, I don't think it would go too well. But it's possible Yuta who's known to have boundless curse energy and was in a hyperbolic time chamber in the past month. I know I casually just said a hyperbolic time chamber like you guys were supposed to know what I was saying. But if you don't know what I mean, Sukuna asked Yuta and Nuji, what did you guys do in the past month? And that's obviously because how fast they've grown in the short amount of time. And Yuta oddly responds with, we cheated. So I didn't really think of anything of that at first, but I kind of made it made sense in my head. Since Yuta and the others were able to retrieve other Cullen Game Fighters abilities, what's stopping them from using the Sumo Wrestler's domain to help them train? Think about it. They asked Charles for help, Angel for help, even though Angel was literally with them. So that's technically not hard to do. And also the fighters that Maki technically saved from Nio. I hate saying this guy's name. Nioya. Naoya and they also help Maki get stronger, it wouldn't be too crazy if the sumo guy was willing to help them. In sumo guy's domain, I don't know his name and I'm not gonna look it up, a hundred bounce is equivalent to less than one minute in real life. And the definition of a bounce is a short period of intense activity of a specific kind. Now give them a month of being able to use this domain whenever they please and they can pretty much get insanely stronger. Maki got a crazy ass awakening in less than one minute in real life and in 1000 bouts. Viewed as a hyperbolic time chamber, time moves way faster in his domain. This would explain why Yuta said they cheated to get this strong and how he was able to use, as Sukuna mentioned, such a sophisticated barrier technique and knew she was able to use RCT. Meaning Yuta using Limitless somehow, given that much time, isn't necessarily impossible. He has an insane amount of time to try and develop the curse energy manipulation needed to control Limitless. This isn't me saying he learned how to control it, of course not. However, it's possible he could have learned to use a Limitless technique as like a suicide bomb. Similar to Yuki, how she used Black Hole as like a last resort if everything else failed, Yuta can use one Limitless technique that takes away all his curse energy and takes a massive toll on his body to the point where he can't fight anymore. Is the only way I could see this happening. And it wouldn't make sense and wouldn't be too much of some bullshit type of asshole. Another belief is that Yuta can just copy Six Eyes. I personally don't like this as it feels like it's too convenient and won't have the best explanation unless Yuta literally awakens the Six Eyes right now because he's technically a distant relative to Gojo and Gojo is now dead, meaning there's going to be another Six Eyes user. But then again, I'm pretty sure the Six Eyes users has to be born with the Six Eyes, but that's neither here or there. But there's an argument that Yuta was able to copy Inumaki's curse speech as well as copy his natural born features like his snake eyes and fangs. Those features aren't actually a curse technique, but that's only if you believe the two things are separate, curse speech and the snake eyes and fangs. For the sake of the discussion, you could argue that it is separate, but honestly, if we're looking at the in-story stuff, just from the users of curse speech, it kind of implies that you kind of need the snake and fang sigils in order to use it. We see Nujo put the sigils literally on the microphone to use curse speech. And when he used it in the Sendai colony, he obviously had the markings. And we know Inomaki was just born with the markings and he has it all the time. But more recently, it's actually said in data books apparently that these two things are separate. People are actually born with curse speech. Same with how people are born with limitless, but don't necessarily have the six eyes. And since the JJK prequel was something that was pre-established and made a long time ago, it could be something that's reckoned. It could be something that's less canon than what's going on right now, but that's all for your interpretation. But for this video, let's just assume they're two separate. The six eyes is something that's also inherited within the Gojo clan. So it kind of makes sense that he can copy those born abilities that Gojo has aka six eyes when he copies his limitless, like how he got fangs to snake eyes when he copied Unomaki's curse speech. But this option is less likely to me. I'm, I I think I'm gonna stick with the suicide bomb. If you guys can recall this chapter, it was Mecha Sukuna could get caught off guard and was pretty much getting caught off guard by Yuta every time he used a new curse technique as Yuta stated. It would be wild if Yuta popped off a limitless technique against Sukuna because that's the last thing this brother is expecting and it would really do a lot. 
This chapter also emphasized the terrible condition that Sakuna is in right now. Sakuna could barely use reverse curse technique properly, he can't use his domain expansion, and he can't use the world cutting slash while using hollow wicker basket. He's also limited to two arms. But the most crucial part is that Yuji's hits seem to affect Sakuna the most. Every time Yuji hits Sukuna, he disrupts the harmony between Sukuna and Megami's body, while constantly dropping Sukuna's curse energy. I already told you all to invest in some Megami stocks, because trust me, Megami will be back. But goddamn, Yuji is turning out to have potentially a broken curse technique. Well, all in all, time for Yuji and Yuji to cook is slowly coming to an end for now. These brothers had two good chapters, and they will probably cook for a next one as well, but calling it right now, the next chapter ends with the tides turning in Sakuna's favor for a little while. Then once again, the tides will turn for the student's favor once again. Let me know what you guys think about this chapter. Akari is a fucking goat. I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.